or to be sconce in context, analyzing the visual references in Alan Phelan's sculpture. Orgy Biscons Hotel Noah's is a site-specific artwork that has its imagery and historical references all rooted in its location. Similar to the pop art enlargements of Klaus Oldenburg, Alan Phelan creates an oversized version of a domestic object, a sconce or candle holder. The visual characteristics of this sculpture also bring to mind contemporary examples such as the inflatable qualities of a Jeff Koons work and the vibrant colours of an Ugo Rondinone installation. However, the sculpture's strongest visual reference is to local 18th century Georgian plasterwork. A lot of my work references Roy G. B., um, uh, which is red, green and blue, and that comes from this Jolie screen photography process that I've been using for the last few years. To explain it, I've used red, green and blue to colour walls and bits of architecture and other objects. The sconce, or the, the candle holder, which is the sculpture, came from a, a random image on a social media feed. So this particular uh, image that was posted was just of a, a, an 18th century French Rococo sconce, uh, a two candle holder, and I just thought it looked really interesting and I'd hold it for later. When this commission came up, with the building being an 18th century building, the time kind of, you know, s slots really well together. Taking this etching, modeling that into another three-dimensional um, form, then got 3D scanned. But what's really interesting about the process is that it's taking a, a hand model thing that's about, you know, 40 centimetres high and, and enlarging that to five metres. So the influence of the Dublin stucco work kind of began, I guess, with the exterior of City Hall because it's got these Corinthian columns that have acanthus leaves on it. And acanthus leaves are pretty central to a lot of Georgian plaster work. It's in every cornice of every Georgian building, in that gap between the ceiling and the wall, there's that kind of layering and layering and, 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 and repeat of the, the acanthus leaf. This particular sconce design has that kind of elaborate and elongated and exaggerated acanthus leaves as, a, as the curl between the different points of the candle holders. This is, is, more, is less Georgian and more Rococo, so it's more free and, and there's a certain kind of freedom and, 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 and less of a, a rigid repeat pattern in the Rococo. It's, it's, it's more theatrical, it's more outrageous, it's more flamboyant. And I was interested in kind of tapping into that, especially when it's going in front of a, of a, a very geometric, symmetrical building like City Hall. Some of the finest examples of local 18th century plaster work or stucco work can be found at Newman House, 85 and 86 St. Stephen's Green. So Newman House is essentially two houses, 85 and 86 St. Stephen's Green. Um, modern numbering, of course. Uh, 85 was the first house to be built um, of the two um, from about 1738 for Captain Hugh Montgomery. The interiors of this house were made by Paolo and Filippo Lafranchini and they practiced this very high relief kind of late Baroque style of interior decoration specifically in plaster. These artists have a kind of a cachet, I think. I probably should note that this is attributed to them um, because there's nobody else in Ireland that could do this work at the time. And they were employed at the same time um, for the Earl and Countess of Kildare at Carton. And in turn then, they create uh, or, or stimulate uh, a local response, um, which is the kind of work that you see in 86 St. Stephen's Green. So the adjoining house, 86 St. Stephen's Green, was built about 25 years later, from about 1765, and that was built for Richard Chapel Whaley. So it's a bespoke house, it's, it's considerably larger than its neighbour, um, and although it has the same richness of interior decoration, it's in a, it's in a different style. Um, the builder of the house is Robert West, one of the key figures of the mid-century in Dublin and his style of decoration becomes known as the Dublin School. Essentially, it's um, a style that can be kind of reduced to a number of kind of key elements. Um, one is the lack of a sort of a focal centerpiece. There's no figurative elements um, in, in the Dublin School. It relies instead on, I suppose, a series of framing devices. In some cases, it's the kind of repertory of the Lafranchini, the use of foliage, uh, specifically a canthus leaf ornament, often kind of attenuated and stretched out into long uh, tendrils. And these are the elements that you see on the ceilings of 86 
St. Stephen's Green. So it's exemplary, if you like, of this Dublin School of uh, Decoration. This is one of a series of videos exploring Allen Phelan sculpture. To view the whole series, please visit sculpturedublin.ie.